Oh, I used to see a lot of birds. Uh, they would use the meadows, you see, because a lot of them were seed eaters, and of course grasses and all that have seed, and uh, it was a good cover for pipits and things like that that uh, nested in. The uh, corncrakes nested in, but they were at a couple of farms a mile away from us. The farmer used to ride two horses pulling a machine, cutting the grass, and it had a bar with a, a blade on it, you know, and little knives, and it used to cut all the hay. But it also had a lever, and if you pressed it, up went the... The farmer would mark the nest with a little stake, not obstruse, of course, just so as he could see it. And then as soon as he got near the nest, he used to lift his bar and drop it after it got over the nest, and that preserved it. And that was at Oudgate. There also were one in Ambleside, just on the edge of the village, because there's houses on it now, of course. You used to hear them a lot just before dusk. You know, in uh, the beginning of May, it would be about 9 or 9.30, wouldn't it? But the, I know my mother and I were going to Ambleside, and we used to walk it, and it used to be in there, you know, with its rattle. The only time I actually heard corn crates here that was during the war, and it was just over the garden wall in the nearest meadow, creaking away. Because they, they stop making the noise when you get near. They just keep quiet, and when you walk away, they start again. <laughs> the corn crates had disappeared after, after they started using a lot of uh, cutting, cutting the hay earlier. They used to nest in the meadows. Well, this is about 1930, I think 31, 32. My dad was uh, doing some work in one of the houses just down the village there, and I used to go after calling when I'd had me been home, home from school, see what he was doing. You could hear the corn cracks cracking away in this field opposite. <coughs> oh, yes, huh? Oh, you often used to hear corn cracks, and then they gradually got less and less. and. Uh, after the war came and the Sardis came and intensive farming started there, just disappeared. Obviously, the nests couldn't survive the earlier morning. Wherever you went, there were more skylarks. There'd be a sort of a concert of them because there'd be two or three getting up quite close to each other and their sounds would merge and you'd hear a concert of, of skylarks. It was a wonderful sound. Several of them bursting into song at the same time, very close to each other. There were skylarks that used to be in the meadows because when my father was cutting the grass, if he managed to see um, a skylark's nest, he would get his horses to miss that bit so that it wouldn't disturb the nest. He didn't want to never kill any wild bird or anything. He would just want it, it to be left there in a natural way. And I mean, if he'd gone over it with the mowing machine, that would have been the end, the end of the lot, wouldn't it? The fowls, I think, had a lot more larks on them then and I can remember them rising on summer mornings. And gorse bushes full of cobwebs and locks rising and rising and rising and singing as they rose and finding larks' nests, being careful not to stand in them because of course they're, they're up down the ground. You have to be careful where you put your feet. Well, uh, they were on the land that was ploughed and uh, there was often a nest, you would see a tewit on a nest. And now I've got to plough that fan, I've got to plough that nest over. And uh, I remember um, taking those eggs away and putting them somewhere else, ploughing over the nest, 
and then setting the nest again and making a nice little nest for it as it was before and putting the four eggs back in and do you know those two each came back to that nest but we miss that now we don't have them now There would be peewits as well as the scar. Yes, there would be. Yes, there would be. But I don't know which birds there were that you used to sometimes see them clinging to the, the, the grasses, eating the seeds from the top. Yes, there would be the curlews. Have I said the curlews? Oh, well, they would be there too. Oh, yes, they had a beak, hadn't they? They went sort of a hoop beak. That's right, yes, that's right, if I remember that, yes. But the birds that I remember and that have disappeared were the curlew, the skylark and the lapwing. And they seem to be everywhere. And now they're not. All our terrible farming methods have destroyed their nesting sites, I think. But they used to be really frequent. Curlews, that wonderful warbling sound, and then they would nest and you'd see the babies and lapwings and skylarks. And with the, one of the things that we did have an awful lot of on the farm, which I remember, is curlew. We had a lot of curlew. And the, one of the first signs of spring was the sound of the curlew. They were fairly common in those days. Even the fields, you know, you the curlews in, they're not there now. And that's because of uh, herbicides and insecticides, where the farmers, you've got these beautiful green fields with no insects, no uh, weeds of any description. So there's nothing for the birds to eat. And that's why there's no laughings and no curlews now. Whereas in the old days you didn't have those chemicals. It was only after the war that they were, they were encouraged to be used to, to feed the population. They looked after themselves a bit. They nested right in the hedgerows so that they you know, weren't disturbed by cattle machinery or whatever. Uh, and then, oh, now then, the partridge nest would have probably six, five or six eggs in, uh, but there would be eight or ten birds in a good covey of partridge. But they had the sense to get out of the way of the uh, machinery in haymaking. The partridge, we lost them ultimately, but. Um, why, I don't know. I never knew why we lost our partridge, because suddenly you realised, oh, we don't have a covey of partridge now. And as uh, we used, you know, about the 50s, we'd have a covey, of, always had a little covey of partridge, sometimes it was bigger and better than others. But um, I never knew why we lost our partridge. Around the farms was all the all the birds, you know, the, they were quite common in those days simply because there was plenty of food. You had animals, you had straw, so you, and, uh, and oats and stuff, which you dropped something off and that would feed a bird. Now then, I'll tell you about yellow hammers. Once a year, my father used to sweep out the big barn where all the hay was going to be stored. And all the hay seeds went out of the barn doors into, into the pasture. And after he'd done that and gone away, that part where he'd left the seeds, the hay seeds, it was full, 20, 30, 40 yellow hammers. They just seemed to come to eat the seeds from, that had been left over from the previous Yes, hey. It would be June, June, beginning of July, that time. 
It was wonderful because we, we very rarely see yellow hammers now. Oh yes, it was good.